Hey everybody, welcome back. So for those of us that keep snakes, I know we're always looking for new enclosure ideas, you know, always trying to figure out how we can upgrade and make more naturalistic enclosures and things like that. So one thing that I found works really well, especially when you're talking about smaller snakes and bringing them up in living areas, is using china hutches. Uh, they're not too hard to find and they're not too hard to repurpose. So I'm gonna go over in detail how I set this one up for Bob, our little Sri Lankan. We're gonna get him out, do a little update on him while we're talking about it. So we'll be right back on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Now before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and get Bob. He's our little Sri Lankan. I'm going to get him out so that I don't have to stress him out while we're looking around inside there and all that. And a quick reminder, guys, if you like what we're doing here, definitely get down, hit the subscribe button, get notified when new stuff comes out. Uh, you'll definitely want to start doing that because as time goes, we just had the um, public education event at the museum here that I've got a video that's going to be coming out probably over the weekend or into next week sometime. Uh, so you will definitely not want to miss that. We had a great time, made a great impression on the museum. We've got all kinds of pictures and videos coming from that. And I'm going to go into a lot of detail about how folks can set up these educational events and what you need to participate in them and stuff like that. Uh, so that'll be really good. Make sure you're getting subscribed and notified for that content. Of course, thank you to all the Patreon subscribers. You guys are awesome. If you want to support the channel that way, you can always find that link in the description too. So, let's get Bob out. Now, he's been doing really well, haven't you, buddy? And he's even to the point right now where he hasn't started hissing at me yet, which is a good thing. Yeah, no sooner I say that. So what I'm doing with him, if I go right in there with his face like that, He's either going to strike at me or get stressed out. I'm going to try and move him from this side. Get him kind of moving towards the direction I want him to go. There you go, buddy. There you go. That's a good boy. And we're just going to pull you right out. There you go. He's doing so good. He's been such a good boy lately. The last several times that I've pulled him out, he is just no poop. No nothing, just kind of hangs out. Probably at some point too, we'll be able to use him as an educational animal too, because we're gonna get him nice and calm down. So, but anyway, for those of you that was following up with Bob, this is how he's doing. He's doing pretty good. He's a little bit stressed out right now. He's got a good grip on me with his tail, but he's being a good boy. We'll let him up around our shoulders. I think he'll be all right. So, as you can see, we've got two doors on this. These china hutches, for a snake this size, just quit stressing, bud, come on. <laughs> but these china hutches, for a snake his size, are really, really good. Um, you can get a lot of vertical space in there for them so that they can get in and climb around and stuff like that. And, uh... <laughs> God, he's so huffy right now. I'm gonna have to wait and let him calm down a little bit. But you can get a lot of vertical space for them and you know it's a really good display case for lack of a better word um, you know we don't always want to have big blocky reptile enclosures in our living rooms and our offices and stuff like that and these hutches you know they look nice they look like you know, they look familiar they don't look out of place and you're able to do some really cool stuff with them now this one i was looking around it's been so long since i've had this thing now that I haven't been able to find the original picture of it. But essentially, how this was when I got it, what are you doing? <laughs> essentially how this thing was when I got it was you can see this little brown piece of trim right here. This ran all the way across there. This one ran all the way across the bottom and it had glass shelves on it like you'll see in a lot of them. So what I did is of course, those glass shelves come out. Uh, I don't like having glass shelves on the inside like that. Are you going to bite me in the face again? You better not. You better be good. Because we're not doing any more of the face biting. 
<laughs> I was on a live stream not too long ago and he decided to, uh, he got stressed out by the microphone and then decided to pop me in the face. So we'll see if he does it again. Um, but I don't like to have the full shelves in there because of course they can't really move from one level to the next if you've got that. So I left in the sides under this platform right here. This is all screwed in there of course. So he's got his top platform. I left in this little section over here for this other platform. And this one right here is where his heat's at. So there's a radiant heat panel, a little 40 watt, 12 by 12, that I mounted up underneath here. So, you know, he's got a couple different gradients. He's got the top basque right here, where he can get down on this piece of wood. He can tuck down behind that in the soil if he wants to. And I've also got a little hide up here for him that I'm gonna make a little, I'm gonna get a little bit more ornate hide for him just so it looks better. But he can bask on top of that radiant heat panel too. So he's got every option that he could want for warming up and hiding out right in this little spot right here. And of course, you know, on the bottom, you know, these cabinets, the wood's already varnished. There's a couple different things you can do. You can get, you know, certain types of sealants to put in there, caulking the edges, of course, and stuff like that. Um, what I did on the other one that I've got from my boa out there in the living room is I just took some linoleum and formed that up, sealed it up on the bottom. So that's what seals that. But this one, in order to keep the substrate in, I took a piece of plexi about six inches high and just fit that in right along here and then filled, filled the back side of that up with soil. So I'm not too terribly concerned with the substrate in there. I'm letting that soil kind of pack itself down over time and then I'm going to go in and put some moss and some peat and stuff in there on top of it to kind of help hold some more moisture for him. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things where the soil is going to be thick enough and dense enough that it's going to kind of help hold some of the moisture up off of the wood too. So we've got this that holds all the substrate in and you can use something else. You know, you could, you could put a piece of wood in there or a piece of PVC or something like that if you wanted to. I just wanted to have this, this you know, the transparent nature of that so that I could actually see in if he was running around down here and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, it's really simple. Once you get everything out of there, put a couple platforms in. The thermostat that I've got on here is tucked in right about here. And what I do is on the backs of these, I'll drill three holes in a line and then you can feed the thermostat probe through there and then use the wire to hold it up against there. And if anybody wants to do that and they're not really sure what I'm talking about, you know, just hit me up on Messenger or something like that. I can, uh, you know, we've got our Facebook link on the, on the channel homepage and stuff here. It's just Intrepid Exotics. Uh, so you guys can hit me up there if you want to. And I can show you how I do that, but it, it works really well. It holds that thermostat in place. You don't have to worry about them pulling the wires out and stuff like that. And the only thing is, is when you set your thermostats up like that, you've really got to use your temperature gun because whatever the temperature is going to be here at the probe, like if you want your basking spot to be, you know, say I want this spot right here to be 87 degrees, then that's going to be different there than it is on the back wall. So you just got to kind of keep cranking your heat up and cranking it up until you get the temperature that you want here. So your thermostat may actually read, say, 95, you know, being back up against the wall like that, because that's the temperature that the wall needs to get in order for this to be your basking temperature, if that makes sense. So went a long way around that, but a lot of folks already know that when you've got your enclosure set up. So but you always want to verify your basking spots with a, with a temperature probe. So... So there's his heat. We've got a cool water bowl right here. Really heavy ceramic tree trunk looking water bowl for him. And then we just got some branches put in so that he can climb from the bottom up to this platform. And then another branch that sits here that allows him to climb up to that platform. Um, and he will spend most of his time sitting right here where we got him. He loves that spot. Uh, you know, he'll get down and bask and he'll get into his hide and stuff like that from time to time. But for the most part, he likes to perch right up there where he's at eye level with us and stuff like that. Uh, 
Which is, uh oh, somebody getting ready to shed. Ain't ya? It's about time, buddy. <laughs> it's about time you're getting ready to shed for me. You're such a good boy, even if you don't want to be. Uh, so what else we got? So yeah, you can also, you know, you can run LED lights up in here. Um, I've got some somewhere. Yeah, I've got some down there. I just haven't installed them in here yet. The good thing about this is I've got two open win or two windows in here, plus the light. So they get plenty of light during the daytime. I'll leave the curtains open and stuff like that. So it'll help give them that natural lighting in there. Um, ain't that right? See, I, I, that's the bad thing about trying to make videos like this when I've got a snake because it's so easy for me to get distracted and start talking to the animal and forget that you guys are right there waiting on me to finish talking about this enclosure. Because you're just such a good boy. <laughs> you want to go back home? You want to go back home or you want to hang out? You want to hang out? All right, what else could I talk about? Okay, one cool thing about these things when you've got your china, and I know you guys can't see it right now, but you know what china hutches are like. You know, a lot of times you've got the uh, cabinets down underneath it, you got drawers and whatnot. So, you know, you can keep bedding, you can keep all kinds of stuff down there. You know, your tools, your snake hooks, things like that. Keep all that stuff out of the way. And, you know, these things are really easy to come by. There's, you know, the Goodwill stores and things like that where you can find them at a relatively reasonable price. Facebook Marketplace is great. That's where I found this one. You know, somebody was moving. They didn't want to take it with them. You know, this, I think this is, you know, all, all a solid oak cabinet. And I think I might have paid 150 maybe 200 bucks for it or something like that. Uh, which is, which you'll pay quite a bit more if you go and try and buy some of this stuff new. But you can find some really good deals on that. Now, sometimes, um, you know, some of these cabinets that you'll find, like if you find big wardrobes, like I've got uh, Charlie, my Boa Imperator in, a lot of times those will have the wood panels and they won't have any glass. And you just got to break into a little bit of carpentry skills, cut those panels out, get you a piece of plexi and just, you know, drill the plexi first so you don't crack it putting the screws in. And then you can just, you know, screw all that stuff into place. So you can make windows where there were not windows before. But I mean, you can you can save yourself a ton, a ton of money um, using stuff like this and repurposing it. Um, you can get kind of elaborate on the backgrounds, you know, with the phone and the foam and the stones and all that stuff. This one, I just got a real heavy vinyl um, background paper on here that I put in and it looks, I think it looks just as good as if I, you know, gotten all elaborate and put a bunch of stuff. Plus, it doesn't take away from the space. You know, if I've got a bunch of stuff sticking out of the back and everything, it just kind of takes away from the space that he's got to move around in. It can look really cool. And, uh, you know, if you've got the time to do stuff like that, then, you know, by all means. Uh, but, you know, I was a little bit more utilitarian on this one. And he doesn't notice. He's still got plenty of room to crawl around, and, and the background still looks good on it. So we're still good to go here. Wanna go home there, bud? I see you. <laughs> and I don't have live plants in there either. I will, uh, I'll kill some live plants in a heartbeat. Uh, these right here, yeah, it's just stuff I picked up from Hobby Lobby. They've got the whole, you know, fake plant section in there. Just put these things up there kind of haphazardly so that it gives a little bit of, you know, three-dimensional look to the inside of it. And he seems to like it. So, and then of course, any outside of it, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do for locks depending on what you need. You know, if you're in a house where you got kids and stuff like that, you can always set latches up that you can lock and things like that. This right here, I just had a couple brackets that I put in. Keeps the doors closed. Nobody's going to come in here and just open this up and start messing with them. It's just, just two of us here. Um, 
So yeah, man, the locks for the doors are really simple too. You can get it just like anything else. You can get as elaborate as you want to with it. So again, guys, like I said, if you get any other questions about anything that I didn't cover on here that I forgot because I'm getting older, the older I get, the more I forget, uh, feel free to hit me up. I'm more than happy to answer your question. You can drop it down in the comments. You can catch me on Facebook, Instagram, all of that stuff. I'm pretty easy to get in touch with. And um, don't forget, we've got the... Um, I'm going to start compiling all of the video and pictures and stuff from our museum event. And that should be the next video that comes out over the course of the next few days. Um, definitely be working on getting all that stuff finished up over the weekend. It was a great time. We had a bunch of great folks out there. And I think you guys will really get a lot out of seeing that interaction with the public. It was a huge event. Um, and also, like I said, I'd mentioned a couple times that we've got the other China Hutch for the Boa Imperator. It's out in the living room. So if you guys want to see that, I'll make sure I link that video in the end screen right here or somewhere. It'll be up here somewhere. It'll be one of these little boxes. And then I'll link the uh, the socialization series for Bob over here too in one of these spots. So go ahead, jump over to one of those, and we'll see you guys next time on Intrepid Exotics.